Hi everybody, today our video will be about the trigonometric functions and their inverse. But first of all, I want to remember you uh, what is the definition of inverse function. The function defined by reversing a one-to-one function, one-to-one function is the inverse of the function and is denoted by f minus one. Uh, the, we, not, we noticed that the function should be one to one. Let's have a look to the sine, to the, gra the, the graph of the sine function. Here, as you noticed, the sine function is not one to one. When we uh, sketch a horizontal line, uh, we know that uh, we see that uh, this line crossed the curve several times. Uh, now, to have to obtain the inverse of sine, we need to restrict our domain. Uh, what is the domain and range of the sine function? Here, if the domain is from minus infinity to plus infinity, and the range uh, is from minus one to one. And we restrict this uh, domain from minus pi over two to pi over two to be able to obtain the inverse of sine function. Here, you see the graph of the restricted domain of the sine function. Now. Uh, my domain is minus pi over 2 pi over 2 and the range is minus 1 1 and what will be the inverse you know that to obtain the inverse of a function is to reverse x and y then the domain and range also will be reversed here as you see I sketched the graph of the sine inverse sine function or in other words arc sine function its domain is from minus 1 to, excuse me, it should be 1, yes, and uh, the range uh, is between minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. And uh, recall that sine composite inverse sine is equal to the identity function and the uh, inverse sine composite of inverse sine sine is also equal to the identity function. This is the inverse function test. We should, uh, we will uh, use this identity uh, later on, that's why I recall this. Here we have the graph of the co cosine function. We have the same problem here, it's not one to one. Then, what is the domain of cosine function from minus one infinity to infinity? And the range is from minus one to one. Uh, then, we restrict here for the cosine it's not uh, good to restrict from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2 because when you restrict the area, uh, the domain like this, still you have not a one-to-one -one function. That's why you restrict your domain from 0 to pi. Here you have the cosine function with the restricted domain. Our domain is from 0 to pi. Our range is from minus 1 to y. And the inverse cosine function or arc cosine function also it should be when we reverse x and y, the domain and range also should, should, should be reversed. And we obtain this domain from minus 1 to 1 and range from 0 to pi. You remember that is sine over cosine. Here, all values that make 0 cosine should will uh, make tangent undefined. That's why here on the graph, as you noticed, we have asymptote at all mul odd multiple of pi over 2. At pi over 2, minus pi over 2, pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, etc. And what is the domain of tangent or tangent uh, x function? All the values uh, without plus or minus pi over 2 and all odd numbers of pi over 2. The range is between minus infinity to infinity. Still, it's not one to one as you see. Then we restrict the domain from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. But now, at minus pi over 2 and pi over 2, the function is not defined. It should not be here, as you see, the equality because it's not defined. I, I want to make a remark about this. Look, since we have a asymptote, x tending to pi over 2 from left side tends to plus infinity as you, found, as you see 
and limit extending to minus pi over 2 from the right hand side then it tends to minus infinity here we have the graph of the restricted domain uh, of the tangent function here our domain is from minus pi over 2 please remark there is no equality because it's not defined here and pi over 2 and the range is between minus infinity and plus infinity let's see the function which is inverse tangent function here also we have and the inverse tangent function uh, the graph is like this and as you see the domain is from minus infinity to plus infinity and the range is from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2 we have another remark since we, the limit was that the uh, limits on the uh, inverse function should be the reverse when uh, x tending to infinity here x tending to infinity plus infinity the ta inverse tangent tends to pi over 2 when x tends to minus infinity here the tangent inverse tangent function tends to minus pi over 2 I wanted to give you this remark also now how we compute the inverse trigonometric functions I, I wanted to give you just two examples uh, very very uh, often uh, students make mistakes here because uh, when what is the value of the angle of sine which is equal to minus 1 over radical 2 but there are more than one angle actually but here you should not forget that the inverse sine has a domain between a range between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2 if you find other values which is out of pi over 2 greater or less than minus pi over 2 will, need, will not be the answer of the question here the answer of the question is pi over 4 because we know that sine pi over 4 is equal to my, uh, 1 over radical 2 minus pi over 4 will be equal to minus 1 over radical 2 which minus pi over 2 is in this interval what about minus 1 over 2 inverse cosine it asked me which angle of cosine is equal to minus 1 over 2 here also we should uh, notice that this angle for example is not the answer because it's outside the interval the range of the cos inverse cosine here the answer is 2 pi over 3 now I want also give you to give you identities involving arc sines and arc cosines here inverse sine of minus x is equal to minus sine inverse sine x here I understand that this function is a not function uh, inverse cosine x plus inverse cosine minus x is equal to pi and inverse sine x plus inverse cosine x is equal to pi over 2 I will uh, prove just one of these to show you how we did the proof of this now I want to show you the proof of the third identity which is inverse sine x plus inverse cosine x equals pi over 2 now I defined this identity like y and I, I am looking uh, to the value of y I should find that y is equal to pi over 2 and how now I take the composite sign of the size of the inequal of the equality then uh, this sign inverse sine x plus inverse cosine x equals sine y here we have two expressions I call them a and b and I want to recall that sine a plus b is equal to sine a cosine b plus cosine a sine b then apply this formula here and I obtain sine inverse sine x times cosine inverse cosine x plus cosine inverse sine x times sine inverse cosine x is equal to sine y here as I show you before 
sine inverse sine x is equal to the identity x and is the same for the cosine function. Here we have x square. But we don't know what are equal to these two expressions. I did it here separately. Cosine inverse sine x t. I call this inside of the cosine as t. And I take the composite fun uh, sine of both sides. Then x equals sine t. I sketch my triangle, which should be a rectangle, triangle here. And x is opposite side over the hypotenuse. x opposite side of the over the hypotenuse. And the consecutive side is equal to radical 1 minus x squared. Here, cosine t will be equal to the consecutive side over the hypotenuse, which is radical 1 minus x squared. But actually, t was equal to inverse sine x. I write this expression and I found that this is equal to radical 1 minus x squared. And it will be the same procedure for sine inverse cosine x. I call it t. I take the cosine composite of both sides. And then I obtain cosine t equals x. I sketch my uh, triangle, which should be rectangle. This is the t angle. And cosine is consecutive side over hypotenuse. Then our opposite side will be equal to one radical 1 minus x squared. And here we obtain sine t, t was this expression, equals radical 1 minus x squared. And sine inverse cosine will be equal to radical 1 minus x squared. I replace all these foundings here and I obtain this expression. And I, I eliminate the x squares and I obtain 1 equals sine y. And what is the angle of sine which is equal to 1? Of course, it's pi over 2. And I found the answer. I proved the identity. Thank you for listening. I hope that this video will help you to understand what is the inverse trigonometric functions and how we deal with them. Thank you.